Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor. Today, I'm very excited because we have Michael Foreman today. He is an expert when it comes to networking and communications, and he has authored and written a fabulous book that we're going to talk about later. But right now, I'd like to introduce Michael to you, and he'll tell you a little about himself and what he does. So, Michael, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Okay. Well, uh, um, I am a transplant from New York down to Georgia. Okay, so that immediately changes what I what I am and how I am. Um, I am a military, a former military member. Uh, I'm a Desert Storm veteran. Um, I have a long list of, of networking and how I network. I've always been part of sales and networking, and I'm going to explain or try to explain um, how networking if you do it properly, can increase the bottom line, can increase your profitability. Now, when it comes to um, networking, you know, what are some of the factors that people have to remember? Things have changed so much. We talked about this right before we started. After the pandemic, everything has changed. But, you know, really, if you want to be successful, what are some of the things that people need to understand about networking and why it's so important? Well, for one thing, it's very important just to be present, just to be there. You know, everybody has their cell phones. You know, they go in to introduce to somebody or they have a cell phone in their pocket or something. If you have your cell phone out, now you can have it no volume, you can have it face down, but as long as that cell phone is out, it's still in the mind. Yes. So put that cell phone away, okay? And really what you have to think about is when you're introduced to somebody, you're introducing, look at them in the eye. Yeah. Look at them in the eye, shake their hand. Don't shake their hand like a dead fish, you know, shake their hand firmly. And when you're introducing, this is Mr. So-and-so, Mrs. So-and-so, it's respect and courtesy. And all of these things are forgotten. Yeah. You said as of the pandemic, mm -hmm. and it's like all of a sudden... When I speak in corporations, um, conferences, I always do a, a little survey. And I say, all the 20-somethings, raise your hand. Mm -hmm. All the 30-somethings, raise your hand. 40-something, okay. The 20-somethings, this is all foreign to you. It's like I'm speaking another language, mm -hmm. but it's common sense. Right. 30-somethings, uh, well, you've heard it, but you're really not doing it. Mm -hmm. And 40-something and better, well, you've heard it. You're probably doing one or two of the things, but you should you could be better. Right. OK, so that's how I, I start it all. But then that goes into rapport and the rapport building. Mm -hmm. And it's different if you're one on one with somebody or if you're in a networking event. If you're in just networking, just with one on one, if you mm -hmm. have a sales meeting or whatever, you're trying to build that rapport and you only have let's say 30 seconds, right. only have, let's say a minute. So you have to scan the room. Is there a picture of a child? Yeah. Is there, is it his child? Is it his grandchild? His, his or hers? Right. Um, you know, are there any trophies? Is major league ball? Is there soccer, skiing, anything? And you automatically just go to gravitate to that. And one thing is, if, if it's a grandchild, they love to talk about their grandchildren. Okay. Mm -hmm. They'll talk all day. And that's your, really your goal is to have them talk more than you. Right. Because that's going to break down that wall, not completely, yeah. but it's going to break down that wall. Right. Right. And if you can think of form, the word form, F-O-R-M, family, occupation, recreation, and M is really a message of anything that you can tie in with one another. Right. You can find something to talk about. Mm -hmm. And always, I'm always saying whenever you you have a, a meeting with somebody or if you're going to a networking event, right. you're always giving first. You're giving out information. You are supposedly the expert in your field. Right. Um, but you always want to give. You always want to say, how can I be a salesperson for you. Right. What? Yeah. 
How can I say how good you are? And how can I just say, go see him or go right. see her? So that's the first thing you want to do. And you want to build it from there. That makes sense. You know, I, I think, you know, it, it, when you work as a unit and you have good communication skills with the people that you work with, you know, um, it, it, it really makes a difference. And I, I think respect is a big factor when you show each other respect and you're able to communicate and understand, you know, and you should really be able to, you know, if you pay attention and you really listen into what the other person says, I would think that you're able to really understand who you're dealing with within the first three minutes, if you pay attention. If you pay attention. Yes. Absolutely. And remember, now, I always throw humor into every meeting that I have. Yeah. I consider myself semi-funny, <laughs> um, as most of my family would say. Um, but if you're not funny, if you're not humorous, if you don't find humor, then really stay away from it. Right. Okay. You don't have to be dry, mm -hmm. but, you know listen to what the other person has to say right but and and interject but don't don't be humorous if, if you don't feel it you know? <laughs> that was, what are some of the tips that you you would tell someone when you when they're trying to work with um people and they want to be successful and they want to network and they want to do it properly um and you know they may have you know been not experiencing it in you know since, you know, for a while, you know, what are some of the things that people should do? And maybe you can emphasize on some of the things people shouldn't do. Well, the most important, now what I said, be present. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is that you have to actually listen to what they have to say. Don't think about the next thing that you're going to say, because you're missing everything that they're saying. Exactly. So listen to what they're saying, and you have to think about it and respond. But, you know, right from smiling to shaking the hand to building a rapport, that's all when you first meet the client or prospective client. Yeah. Okay. All of that will be for naught. Okay. Unless you follow up correctly. Right. Now, I've done one-on-one -on -one mentoring. I've done plenty of workshops. And I say this in my breakout sessions. Your follow-up is the key. Now, a few choice things to remember. You're going to follow up, up, up immediately. So if you're given a business card, and let me just say, let me just say one thing. Don't be the person to walk up to the table and start handing out business cards. Okay? Because last time that happened to me, he gave out all the business cards. He said, listen, I'll, I'll be in touch with every single person afterwards. I'll talk to you in a little bit. I looked at the card and I said, garbage. But it's the first thing I did. Right. So if you go to an event, three hours, four hours, if you give out more than 10 business cards, you gave out too much. Really? That means, yep. That means that you weren't, you didn't take the time with everybody. Okay. So a lot of people say, well, don't you want to just get the information and move on to the next person? Right. Well, that may be good, but you're not building a relationship. You're there to network, find a client, but you're there to build relationships. Right. So what you do is, if you can, take their business card, write down the date, what the event was, and something you talked about. Mm -hmm. Just something. So when you go back to your office, go back home, whichever it is, right. you're going to write that email that follow-up email the same night. Mm -hmm. Hey, Stacy, it was great seeing you, great talking with you. I love talking about the children and da-da-da-da. And I look forward to having a cup of coffee with you, whatever. Right. And that that's that's great. But here's the kicker. Here's something that nobody does. You have to follow that up with a handwritten thank you note. Mm-hmm. And people say, why would you have to handwrite it when you can just email it? Well, I want you to think. I want you to think of the last time that you received a piece of mail in your office. Right. Right. So, and I, I tell the story all the time. And the last workshop, they got a big kick out of it. Um, I sent it. It's about 10 years ago, by the way. 
I sent a thank you note to a realtor. I was in the mortgage industry. Mm -hmm. I sent a thank you note to the to a realtor. She was so thankful for the thank you note. She sent me a thank you note for my thank you note. <laughs> so it really it and it just really it, I, I used to do all sorts of things. I used to send a shot glass. Mm -hmm. and say, just give me a shot. You know, <laughs> you know, little things, little things. Yeah. So, you know, little things like that. But you really have to um, think about those notes that you're taking. Thank them for it. Now you have to keep up with it. You right. have to send it. All right, you sent them that. Thank you. No. So in two days, if you haven't heard anything, you haven't gotten a phone call, nothing. Right. You send a little email. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you wait another two or three days. And then maybe you give them a phone call. Right. So be persistent enough, but don't be aggravating. Yeah. Okay. And the whole, the key to everything is that now he, you are known as the expert in your field. Right. Okay. So the expert in the field doesn't annoy his client. Right. Okay. So you have to be cognizant of that. And again, always you give out before you receive anything. Right. That's a great idea. I especially like the idea about giving out the shot glass. That's that's yeah. Great thing. It, it let me. It worked out really well. Where where I come from in New York, our county, thousand realtors. Wow. Okay, probably about five hundred mortgage guys too. So it's really so you had to think of something. You had to go above and beyond. Yeah. And a lot of times it worked. A lot of times it didn't. But a right. lot of times it did. That's awesome. Yeah. I love it. I love it. Now, what are some things that you see people do a lot besides the business cards that they really shouldn't be doing and some things they could probably incorporate into their into their sales that would probably help them enhance themselves in their business? They talk too much. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. That Really, that's what it is. Hi, I'm Mike Foreman um, with Joe Blow Company, da, da, da. And then you, you let them talk. Okay, yeah. but if I'm talking, then what 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 are you, why are you there? Right. You're not there to hear yourself speak. So you really have to let them talk. And of course, this follows along with being present. Yes. Okay. So you you can't talk a lot. Okay. And as I just said before, don't just start handing out business cards. Right. One thing, treat business cards as if it's money. Mm-hmm. Okay, you only give business cards to a certain few. Right. Okay. So, and that's that's really important. But um really what you have to do, and after your first networking event, mm -hmm. it's easy to stay organized. Yes. Okay, sure. I had talked to these people and write these people, right? Okay, well, that's the first thing that you did. Well, my suggestion, as I do in, in whenever I speak, to make networking a part of your marketing thing. Right. Okay. So I went to an event this week. Am I going to go to an event next week or the week after? Yes. Find some, anything. Right. During the summer, it's a little bit more difficult, but even still, okay. So you're going to find those. So the most important thing is now after the second networking event, third networking event, fourth networking event, all of a sudden, mm -hmm. you're going to have a stack of cards. You're going to forget who you talked to, forget what you did. So you're going to have to invest in a CRM mm -hmm. management system. Okay. And you're going to stay organized. And the more organized that you can be, the better off you can be. Now that's true with anything. Yes. Okay. The more organized, is the, the easier it's going to be. Yes. But it really will be that easy for you to um, uh, to be organized. And I I had a I have a mantra. There's a mantra, a networking mantra. Mm -hmm. And if you take nothing from this whole podcast, remember this: if they know you, if they like you, and they trust you, they'll do business with you. Right. And they business with you unless you do the first three. Okay, so if you remember anything, remember that they know you, like you, and trust you, they'll do business with you. That's so true. That's so true. 
I, I think one of the things too is, is when you're you let them talk, you let them, you show them respect, and you know, and you can actually connect with them. That you know, they ha actually have a conversation, and that connection is made. I think the trust factor will increase. Also, what do you think? Absolutely, it, you know, th that respect um, aspect goes such a long way. And because you always respect, give the same courtesy to the janitor as well as the CEO. Right. Because, A, you never know who you're going to talk to. All right. You can always make the mistake. Oh, okay. I, my, my screen flashed. <laughs> um, you will always make the mistake of, of flipping off the, the wrong person or right. saying the wrong person because that janitor could be the brother-in-law of the CEO. Right. You don't know. Exactly. And that's really, I was actually in a situation where the person that was cleaning up the office was watching me and listening to me what I was doing because he was related to the CEO, to the president. Wow. Okay. So that was there way of checking up on me mm -hmm. without me knowing that I'm being checked up on. Wow. And if I didn't have it already to be nice, courteous, yes. respectful, then I would have been sunk. Right. You never, you never know, you know, and those are good qualities to, to have all the time to everybody. Yeah. Well, you know, when I brought my kids up, you know, I, my kids are 28 and 32. You know, they look a person in the eye, they shake their hand and, you know, they've been doing it since they were five years old. Right. So much so where when they were introduced to a friend of mine, they didn't know they're my friend. I would get receive a phone call. I just met your son today. Mm -hmm. He was amazing. He <laughs> shook my hand, looked me in the eye. That's the way you raise a child, you know. So right. I've been doing this forever. That's amazing. And you, you wrote a book. Now, tell me a little about your book. It's called Networking Unleashed, and it's available on Amazon. Um, but it goes through every step from the smiling to the shaking of the hands all the way through the follow up. And I have a cute story in there, two, a few cute stories. Um, but one of which is when I was in New York. You never look a person in the eye. Right. Okay. You look down to the ground. <laughs> if you look at the person in the eye, they're going to say, you want to fight? <laughs> so, you know, when I came down to Georgia, I did the same thing. And when I was walking in front of a Kroger, which is a supermarket, mm -hmm. um, a man stood right in front of me. And I said, can I help you? He goes, why are you looking down? You can't see where you're going. You, you can't see everything around you. I said, and I was confused. I said, what? He goes, come on, look at everybody. What's wrong? Look at everybody smiling. And he left. <laughs> and I was like, hmm, that's interesting. The whole difference. But yeah, but that's the way it is. Now, of course, it depends on where you are geographically. Right. But that really made me think. And, you know, when everyone, I go down the road in my neighborhood. Yeah. Uh, waving, you know. And when I first moved down here, I said, eh, they're flipping me off. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, they're just waving. Everybody's nice. Right. At least I, where I live. <laughs> I always, you know, I always like when someone would look you directly in the eye. Because when I, I feel like when someone doesn't look you directly in the eye, they're hiding something or they're distrustful. You know, so when a person looks me in the eye... I feel more like the person is more trustful, more honest, you know, and, and I, my trust factor actually raises a bar when someone can talk to me and actually look me in the eye. Exactly. You know, when when you're speaking with somebody and they're looking at your forehead or an ear or something else, if you concentrate on their nose, you know, because you have to look in one place. <laughs> um, but you know what, if they don't look at you in the eye, then you're thinking, mm, how can I really trust this person? Right. So now they may be a very trustworthy person, but it'll take that much more for you to trust them. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
and everything as for a salesperson. Now, from the janitor to the CEO, everybody is a salesperson. Yeah. That, that may not be in their title. Right. But they are a salesperson. Right. So, you know, you never know. And again, this is one of life's lessons. Yeah. But if you can trust somebody, okay, if you can speak to somebody in that manner, right. then they're just bound to trust you. Yeah, for sure. Or begin to trust you. Exactly. And I, I like the fact that you mentioned about, you know, try not to do all the talking because a lot of salespeople, they end up doing all the talking and the people lose interest and the people feel like they're trying to be sold. And I think that that's a, you know, a factor that that's important too. Yeah. There, there's an old, um, I went to a sales conference a hundred years ago <laughs> and, and they said that, you know, when you're talking, when you're discussing price or, or a contract or something, the last person that talks loses. Ah. Oh. Okay. So you really have to be quiet and let them talk. Right. Okay. And and really that's what it comes down to. And that was from all those years ago, but it still yeah. rings true when you're dealing with people. And all of this coming back around, um, all of this, um again. It, in my book, it, it it states all of this very clearly. Yeah. Um, but if you follow these steps, you'll see that, well, you'll say, why, 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 why am I not achieving the goals mm -hmm. that I want to achieve? Right. Or right. why can I get past the initial contact? You know, something like that. Yeah. You know, yeah. If you follow these steps, then if you, then if if the client says no after you do everything 100% correct it's a no right not everybody's going to say yes exactly yeah and i think people take that too personally sometimes in the business world they have to really learn that not everyone is going to be their client you know and you know and it's, and some people are like oh, i don't understand why they said no i did everything right like just like you said and you know they couldn't understand why the person said no well you know, sometimes it's just, it's, it's not meant to be, you know, and it's probably better off, I think. Yeah. Well, if you're a salesperson, that no rings through you like, like anything. Okay. It's like, what do you mean? No. What do you mean? You're not going to buy it from me. No. Yeah. Um, and that's where the manager comes in and, and if he can't do it, then maybe that supervisor, but eventually you're going to get to the point where they may just say, no. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. then you put them on your, your list and call them in six months and how'd you do it? And, you know, there's a whole nother uh, ecosystem you can you can follow. Right. And I've actually I, I've had people like that, you know, approach me with that type of uh, stereotype of, of selling. And it's actually I find it more of a, a turn off than an, a turn on, you know, like it makes me want to say no, even more so, you know, where if right. they approached it differently, maybe like you said, if they let me do some of the talking and they weren't so persistent, 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 and, uh, exactly. you know, they would probably have a better chance of gaining me as a client and not losing me as a client. Just when you talk, when you talk, when you talk, um, it's helping you bring those barriers down and away so you may not get the deal right then but you may get it in three months right that goes into your feeder program so you know it, even though a no is a no a no may not it's a maybe right please i do it now if you had to take like a couple of important factors from our conversation what are some things you'd like to emphasize on that you think are important for people to understand when it comes to networking and comes to communication and it comes to sales and and actually you know being able to do the follow up and all these different steps that you mentioned today what are some important factors that you'd like people to understand if they're going to be successful The important factor is one be present OK, you have to listen to what they say. Don't think about the next thing that you're going to do or say. OK, you have to listen to what they are saying. This is after shaking their hands and looking them in the eye and everything. Um, and that the, the building of the rapport 
is probably the most important part. Okay, because that's where either the wall is going to stay up, right, or it's going to come down, right. And you can do that uh, having them talk about themselves and everything. But that, if you can do that in three minutes, five minutes, even if it takes ten minutes, if you have that time, right. Usually, you don't have that time, yeah. but okay. So that rapport and that you're always trying to give rather than receive. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. That's all the very, very important parts. Now, of course, that's the first half. The second half, the whole second half is follow-up. Right. And it's following it up correctly without being too much of a pain. Right. And then you get into it about staying organized and forgetfulness is failure and all that kind of stuff. But the follow-up is the follow-up. Right. That's a very that th those are very good you know points that you you make and I I think you know people have to you know really you know listen rather than speak you know and that's like one of the big the big things that you know and and a lot of people have a hard time doing that especially in sales you know <laughs> they have a hard time doing that they listen with one ear you yeah. know they listen with, that they can hear them not listening to them they're hearing them and they're already thinking about the next question that they're going to ask regarding their sale right so take what you have to offer completely off the table right just find out what they are what they're about what they are selling or servicing or something else how can i be a part of that how can i how can i refer you for you to be a better person right okay and so once they see you do that be more apt to open up then they'll say oh do you have a business card Mm -hmm. I say yes. And that's there's one of them. So when they ask for your business card, it goes a lot longer, goes a much longer way than if you just hand it to them. Right. Very true. Very true. Now, where can people find your book? My book is on Amazon. I should have it right here, but That's horrible to do. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, right. Network it unleashed. Yes. Well, it keeps disappearing. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's it's on Amazon. I've um, I just recently republished it, um, and uh, it's it's selling very well because after I do, uh, whether it be a podcast or really a workshop. You know, the person just says, okay, I have 25 people. Where do I order from? Because I'm going to order 30 of the books. Right. You know, because they're kind of keeping it, they're giving it to each salesperson mm -hmm. as a guideline. Right. So it, it it works really well both ways. And I think a, a, a book like that is really good to have too. Because if you're, if you're trying to work on enhancing your, your skills when it comes to sales, you know, having a, a, a book that's written in a very simplistic form that can, you know, explain it and, and it doesn't have to be so complicated, you know, goes a long way because I think people just really want to understand. They want to, you, you know, they want the pain point. They want, they want to understand and they want a solution. And when you have that in one book, it goes a long way because it, it helps solve the problem or even enhance and make your, your, your sales and, and your business grow. I'll guarantee you that if you're a salesperson, if you're a company and you have your salespeople pick up this book and they read it and they follow it, I guarantee you, your sales will increase even the following month. I bet it that's, will. That, that's, that's how um, secure I am with the information that I put in it. I agree. I, you know, it, it, it's, it's not as, it's not as complicated as people think it might be. It's just learning the, the actual steps and learning, you know, how to go about it the right way. And that's what, you know, helps someone grow. They can go from not making any sales at all to excelling and making hundreds of sales just by just understanding, you know, the, the simple things that need to be done. You know, and a little tweak here, a little tweak here, a little tweak here. Sometimes, you know, you might be doing other steps right, but there might be one or two that you're 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 lacking, and that's causing you not to make the sale. So absolutely, 
Absolutely. It's those little tweaks that will put you onto the next plane. Yes, definitely. Definitely. Now, if you had to, you know, tell the audience anything that you'd like to emphasize, are there anything else that you'd like to emphasize about um, we, w- we went over today about communication and networking? Just, you know what, as, as an overall feeling after the respect, the, the, the courtesy, just be kind, mm-hmm. be kind to everybody. Yes. Uh, do unto others as others you would want them to do to you. That's an old, old saying from the seventies, but yeah. you know what? Um, relax um, and just, and just keep in touch with those people mm-hmm. that you come in contact with, because again, you're looking to build a relationship, not just a client. Right. So you know what? And, but you can't do that if you just see, speak to them, you know, once every nine months, right. You know, month, once every month, send them a quick email. Hey, how you doing? Looking forward to it. You know, invite somebody out for a cup of coffee, um, a lunch and learn, uh, something like that. Right. And uh, you'd be amazed at how far it goes. Oh, definitely. Definitely. I agree. Now, where can people find you on the internet? Well, if you go to my website, and that's michaelaforman.com. Okay. I made it very simple. <laughs> it's michaelaforman.com. On there has some a bunch of podcasts I was on, uh, information about me, about the book. And there's a contact form. And that comes right to me. And I'll contact you probably by the next day. Um, I get a lot of interest that way. So if you go to the website, just even just to read about what I am and what I'm all about, mm-hmm. um, contact me through the website and um, I'll get it and I'll call you and it'd be very easy. That sounds amazing. This has been wonderful. I thank you so much for coming on the show. This has been you know, very important because I think a lot of times people lack communication skills nowadays with all the technologies and all the AI and, and the way people do things. They, they don't, you know, some people have forgotten that communication is the number one, um, you know, key to, to making sales and to, to grow in your business. And, uh, and the little things like you mentioned, you know, can go a long way too. just making someone feel special, personalizing it, following up and just going out of your way, you know, makes a big difference too. So definitely, I, I agree a hundred percent with you. And I thank you so much for coming on the show and sharing some of these tips and, and tools to help people, you know, enhance their, their business skills and their communication skills and networking skills. So thank you so much. My honor. It uh, really was. Thank you. You have a great day. You too.